and welcome to this episode of Aerial ABCs. I'm Sarah B.B. Holmes of Paper Doll Militia, and today we're going to be looking at Tuck Under the Bar on Horizontal Apparatus. Though it's a super common mount, tucking under is actually quite a complex movement, and it can be a big hurdle for people. You might hear people say, I just don't fit, or I have really short arms, so it doesn't work for me. Though there can be reality to body proportions being a factor, there are some physical actions and body mechanics which can take the skill from the impossible to possible. Think of your body as a concertina. Thighs to chest, heels to bum, and a foot flex. These three things need to happen in order to fit under the bar. Lack of mobility or strength in any of these areas will make this skill difficult or impossible. Just to be clear, in this visual, we are showing the isolated movements. In a real tuck under the bar, these movements would be more blended. Thighs to chest. This is your hip flexors working, but it's also tilting your pelvis posteriorly or tucking under. This happens with low ab engagement. If you do not get that little extra tuck through the engagement, then you may not fit under the bar or you might end up compensating with something else. There's a lot of ways to increase the strength in your hamstrings Here's one, which yes, is important, but it's usually not hamstring strength that's lacking, but the mind-body connection of heel to bum during an invert. Why is there a missing connection? A common habit people build before they have the lat strength to invert is tag a foot on the bar. We will address this more later. Here's a way to increase your foot flex. Use a yoga block, a chair, anything where you can get your heels lifted up a bit and do your relevés. For an extra challenge, go for a single releve. Once you've tired out your calves, go ahead and stretch them out. This is the concertina floor test. Use a broomstick or any kind of stick or strap and test that you can concertina squeeze yourself enough to pass your stick past your feet. The results of this test might show you that you actually can fit, or it might show you that your body proportions are a factor in fitting under the bar. Okay, so we talked about the concertina action, the accordion of squishing your body, thinking about that contraction of thighs to chest, heel to bum, and your dorsiflexion foot flex. So all these things combined to tuck you together in order to fit under the bar. So fitting under the bar has a little bit to do with strength and mobility. And as we have discussed, it can sometimes be body proportions that are making it so that it's harder to fit under. So that's one thing. We now have to talk about the lats. So the lats are the muscle control that make it so that your body, now a nice little squished egg, can rotate under. So the inversion part of the tuck under the bar. So where are your lats? How do you find them? And how do you test that they're working? These are your lats. I love this picture because it shows both the arm position overhead and by your side. On the right hand side, you can see that the arm bone is up, like it would be if you were hanging. You can also see that the latissimus muscle attached to the arm bone is longer, meaning that when your arm is above your head, it's lengthened. Look at the arm on the left. The muscle attaching to it, the lat, is shorter, meaning it's contracted when your arm is by your side. So when you go from an overhead position to your arm being in line with your body, your lats are contracting. We're gonna do a similar floor test as the other one, but instead of focusing on if you can fit under, we're focusing on the lat push. Push the broomstick away from you in order to rotate 
under it. If the pushing is hard, this is what you need to focus on in the air. We're now going to do a little exercise called kittens. This works on concertina and lat push. We're going to use a strap to assist us. The strap supports your sacrum so you don't drop your hips the moment before you're tucking under. Here I'm using a two meter strap with a carabiner on the end. I choke one end to the trapeze and attach with the carabiner to the other side. Alternatively, to make you work a little harder, you can use something with stretch. The best for this is those extra thick rubber exercise bands. I don't happen to have one of those, so I'm using my socks. The strap allows you something to rest under so you can focus on the pushing as well as the concertina. When you're doing your kittens, this is a great time to work out the point flex point timing that makes a tuck under look smooth. Okay, we just had a look at the lats and we had a look at the lat push. So, to review, when our arm is in an overhead position, our lat is at its full extension. When we push, in order to bring our arm in line with our trunk, we are engaging our latissimus dorsa in order to invert. Now, you may have noticed, we are not doing straight arm inversions, which is what this would be when we're doing our tuck under the bar. What we're doing right now is a bent arm inversion. So when we do a bent arm inversion, our lats are engaging from here down to in line with our trunk. Our elbow is opening and our bicep is releasing, which means the muscle is going from a partial contraction to a release, but it can't just drop out. It has to happen with control. So it's like you're doing a bicep negative. And these things have to be happening at the same time. So I like to think of it as driving a car. As your gas goes on, the clutch comes off. It's an inverse relationship. One muscle engages, the other one releases. And they have to kind of happen at the same time and bypass each other or else it's going to get a little bit awkward. So lats engage, bicep releases. Let's have a look at some example videos of what can go wrong in that relationship. This is me doing my tuck under without slowly releasing my bicep strength. Notice how I just drop. I end up doing a foot tag as well. This is me getting stuck in the inversion. This happens when people have strong biceps but don't know how to slowly let off their control while initiating the lat push. It's usually a mind-body connection rather than a lack of strength. Generally speaking, when we're working statically, we want our shoulder to be in a neutral position. So what that means is we don't want to be hanging in a full elevated position or in a full jammed down depression or in protraction or retraction. We're aiming for our shoulder to sit really happy and healthy in the middle of those ranges. However, when we're working dynamically, meaning moving through a movement, we're going to be moving through a fuller range of motion, so not always locked in that neutral position. When we're doing a tuck under the bar, we are actually going to roll through a bit of a protraction the moment that our feet go under the bar. However, we need to make sure we're really aware that we're not staying either locked, which is one problem, or dropping into our protraction. By sinking quickly in that moment, we're putting a lot of strain on our middle trapezius and rhomboids as they relax and we sink into it. So it's about moving through a full range of motion while keeping our shoulders structurally sound with enough engagement and control. I'm intentionally locking my shoulders in neutral. Notice I don't fit. I have to protract in order to fit under the bar. Here, I'm totally disengaging at the end of my invert. This is making me drop into my shoulders.
From your neutral shoulder tuck position, begin to protract. You'll start to sink. To return, don't push off the bar, but squeeze your shoulder blades together to lift back up. This is so complicated. How do I assess or address what's going on with me? I mean, it's a tuck under the bar. If you can't fit, you probably don't have enough abdominal contraction. Work on your concertina. If your hips are dropping, work on your inversion strength. This includes the lat push and the bicep slow release. It's okay, it's just not smooth. Work the timing with kittens and slow negatives. The moment you leave the floor should be with control and awareness. Try not to do the running man stance, but leave with both feet at the same time. If you're struggling with the muscle memory of this, go ahead and use a sock. Squeeze it between your feet and see if you can lift up without dropping the sock. To cross or not to cross? This is the question. On a Lyra, you have a lot less space. So a lot of times it's common practice for people to cross their ankles, though it is possible to have your feet be parallel using a strong dorsiflexion. So what's the answer? The answer is train both. You can only make an artistic choice if you're not operating from a place of limitation. It's a default if you only know one way. It's a choice if you can do it more than one way. We hope this tutorial on Tuck Under the Bar has been useful for you. If you have any questions, contact us at teachertraining at paperdollmilitia.com or comment below. Safe training.